from standing, but it's all about the setup, right? When I finish guillotines, it's always on the bottom because I have more control over my opponent's body, right? Um, why do I love guillotines? Man, uh, when I first started, my first professor was Josh Hinker. So if you know anything about jiu-jitsu, you know he loves guillotines. So that was probably the first technique I learned. I can't remember that far back, but it was. Um, so, and when I'm rolling with guys, especially guys that are bigger than me, the two kind of sets of submissions that are my highest percentage are either guillotines or leg locks, right? Um, the reason being is, like, everybody's neck is more or less the same. You can't, like, you know, hulk out of a guillotine very easily. Whereas you can probably if you had ginormous arms and if you were my size. Um, but so we're, we're going to learn is guillotine set setups from standing, but I want to go over the mechanics of the guillotine first. There's a wide range of, of levels here, so I want to make sure I have everybody on the same page. For some of you, it'll be review. For some of you, maybe not. Even if you've done guillotines your entire life, you may pick up something that you may, like, use later, right? So I'm going to use my lovely Yuki. Yes. My career, everybody. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. So when we, we do guillotines, uh, a common misconception is that you're trying to get as deep as possible. And not the case. What you want to do is essentially aim for your the blade of your hand to be right underneath their throat. So we're going to uh, just kind of demonstrate. I'm going to try to create as much space. Normally, when I'm finishing the guillotine, I want to take all that space up. Right, golden rule in jujitsu, whether you're doing guillotines or anything, really, is if you're attacking, you're taking space away. If you're defending, you're creating space. So if I'm finishing Mike with a guillotine, I don't want all this space. I'm gonna take it away and I'm gonna show you how. But when, just for demonstration purposes, feel free to get up and move if you can't see, is I want the blade of my arm against his throat. Sometimes I do a, uh, like a five finger or a 10 finger guillotine where I do more of a chin strap, but for 101 guillotine, let's focus on this. So my thumb is pointed towards the back of his neck, right? And the blade of my arm, not the fat part or the nice squishy part of my arm, right? Is up against his throat. Because he could probably eat this if I have a nice cushion underneath his throat. If I go too deep, look at all that cushion, right? I can. Change it up and it's gonna be more of a, you know, an inverted kind of rear naked choke. You can do weird shit like that, but we're going over guillotines right now. So I want the blade of my arm to be here, right? And so when I have a guillotine, I want his head to be poking out the side. Now, without a head, there's a hole. So I need to focus on just tightening that hole up because basically a guillotine is a noose around the neck with a bit of a, you know, throat crunch with the blade of your arm. So I'm going to take, the way I do that is one, I'm bringing the blade up. See how that's changed the dimensions of my, my little noose here? And two, I'm bringing my elbow closer to my rib cage. If there was a neck here, you would be down, right? So when we go and do that, I'm grabbing, I like to grab the back of my hand. People have variations on where they like to grab. The most important part is that the way you grab, you're still keeping that blade up against his throat. So I like to cover over top of my, my uh, knuckles here, grab the meaty part of my hand, right? And I do kind of a cliffhanger grip. That's gonna lock it in nice and tight. In, in Nogi in particular, we do a lot of cliffhanger grips. So you find divots, you find corners, and you dig your, your fingers in and you lock it down, usually by doing either a twist or a pull down, right? You're doing quick finger grip. And all I'm gonna do is I'm pulling up, I'm rocking the baby, call it rocking the baby, right? Rocking his little head right into death. And then, <laughs> most important, and a lot of people forget this, is you gotta bring your tricep down. What that does is without a person, See how I'm bending his head down? I'm bending him into the choke. So three things simultaneously. I need the blade, wrap it around the meaty part of my hand, like this. I'm pulling up against his throat. I'm rocking his head into death, and I'm bending him into the choke. Into the choke, okay? <coughs> Just like that. 
This, I think, is the most critical aspect of finishing the guillotine. If you can understand that you need to push the back of his head into your choke, you're going to increase your guillotine percentage exponentially. Right? So we're just going to finish it from standing without any fancy entries or anything, just so I know everybody's kind of on the same page. Right? So we're going to grab the head. We're going to grab it however grip you want to grab. Usually, I recommend over the knuckles. Grab the meaty part of your palm, lock it in. Again, at any time, this other arm, bring it to your rib cage. If in doubt, bring it tight, right? If it's hanging out there, bring it tight. Even if it does nothing to it, execute it, just this is a good, good way to be, right? T Rex. T Rex is fantastic at guillotines. We know. Mike Curry knows. He's a little bit of a Right? So we're bringing up, rocking and then driving our triceps down. Cool? Can we work that? Just so I know everybody's on the same page. Yeah? Right? One, two, three. Oh, I, I told Mike, and I, I, I did this, uh, this seminar at his, his academy, slightly different, but um, I love teaching guillotines. I will not take a coach choke class. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> I am done getting choked. I do not want to drill jokes. Um, but you guys are. <laughs> All right. Um, so just a, a quick note on, on the rock and the baby. Important not only for finishing, but for retaining the guillotine, particularly when you're on the ground. So if we're in, in guard, you know, say I, I either got the guillotine from standing or I sub the guillotine from guard, right? So if I, I want to curl up when I'm finishing it, I don't want to be out here. Because if I'm out here and I'm squeezing as hard as I can, he may have an opportunity to pop his head out. Right? Maybe not with me because I'm just so good. But <laughs> <laughs> when you rock it, you want to be here. Same thing with your, your standing. You never want to be like kind of pushing your chest out. You always want to be kind of curled into them. And when you rock the baby, you're rocking kind of arching down and trying to connect your elbow with your belly button. I told people, uh, several people that, but you're not going to get there. You're not going to connect your elbow to your belly button. But because you're exaggerating your movement and you're focused on that, you're going to get to the point where you need to be. Everybody underestimates things, especially with wrestling, right? Everybody thinks I'm going to put that person down, but they only put, think about putting them down here. If I'm taking somebody down and putting them through the wall, I'm not getting that far, but in somewhere in between, I'm going to get the takedown, right? So we want to exaggerate the motions and exaggerate the amount because we're always going to underestimate it, right? So let's go into uh, just a one-on-one -on -one standing guillotine entry, right? Anybody stem here? Thank you. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. Yeah. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? That applies in jujitsu quite a bit and a lot of different things. I want to create a motion in the opposite direction of the motion that I really want him to do. Why? Because if I want him into a guillotine and I immediately pull him, what's he going to do? He's going to pull back, right? But if I push him, boom, he's going to come exactly where I want him to go, and he's going to do all the work for me. I'm a lazy grappler. I like people to do the work for me, right? I don't want to expend any energy at all. I call it economy of movement, right? I'm only going to expend the amount of energy that I absolutely need to. Why? Because he's going to tire out doing all my work, and then I'm just going to finish him, and I won't even be breathing, right? So when I go into this setup, a nice wrestling tie-up begins with the tie-up. When you tie up, you don't necessarily want to tie up lower down on the neck because he's strong here. Yeah, he's going to posture up. When I tie up, I really want to go around the crown of the head, right? Because he's going to be weaker. It's farther down the leverage. So if he tries to posture up, with very little effort, I'm able to keep him, his posture kind of down, right? So one, you want kind of crown of the head. You don't want here, you want the crown of the head. Two, I keep my elbow punched in along his center line so that I, can, I have something to kind of punch him away with. Why do I want to punch him away? Perfect. So he does all the work for me. He comes back towards me. Now all we're going to do is we're going to punch him away. I have his head, right? 
I'm going to put his head into the basket. This is my basket, right? Have it on my hip. You can even cock it if you want to. I'm putting his head here, right, in the opposite hand. So there's no transfer. I'm just transferring his head from one hand to the other. So I push away, he pushes forward, and I put him in the basket. Fuck it, right? Again, I just want the blade of my hand. So I'm not going to go super deep. I'm just going to go far enough. And a good rule of thumb is the thumb, right? Thumb goes along the neckline. And then you're just shallow enough, right? So we're here. I have the front of his head. I push him away. Put him in the bucket. Get my grip. And then I can either finish up here, which I can, if I, especially if I'm short and they're tall. Like I feel like I have a lot of leverage. Or if you want to sit down, this is important, there's a couple different options. One, you can sit down controlled, kind of do a like a, a like a guard pull. Really, really important. You want a guard pull on the opposite side, the leg goes up on the opposite side of the body. Why? Because his defense is boom to pop his body over to the opposite side of which his head is. I can hang on to it, I can make it annoying, but I'm never gonna finish it, right? So if I guard pull, I have his head, boom. I guard pull, I like to kind of keep this out. This is just a personal preference. You can, if you don't feel like you want it, cool. But I like to keep this thumb out and kind of control its arm as I do this, but I'm pulling here and keeping it nice and controlled. You can finish it inside arm, or outside arm, I prefer arm out, right? And then I'm just going to finish it, right? So you can finish it standing, you can pull guard, but again, the entry is the most important, and it starts with a tie-up, right? I'm tying up high from the crown of his head, I'm punching him away, he comes in, I get the guillotine, right? I like to stuff the arm, you can grab on immediately, just to keep it nice and secure. I'm still, I'm throughout this entire process, I'm putting pressure on the back of his head. Right? I'm keeping his posture down just by rocking my tricep down. Right? I'm going to pull guard, control, boom. And then all I'm doing is I'm pulling up, dropping down, and rocking his head. Boom. Cool? Any questions? Yes. This uh, grip you have over your own hand, Yeah. Um, are you using this hand to change the angles of your choking arm? I'm just keeping it up. Yep. I, the most important aspect of, of the direction in which your hand is, is I want that blade right up against the throat. If it's a guy, it's against an Adam apple, I'm sure it feels marvelous, right? If it's a girl, it's still going to be uncomfortable, right? So it's going to either be they're going to tap to the pain or they're going to tap to the choke or to both. Either way, tap to tap, right? Cool? Yeah? Questions? No? One? Yeah? One, two, three. New partner! New partner! Uh, what do you do if, you know, somebody's putting pressure on you? You have the guillotine, you've sat out, down, they can't get their body over to the other side. They're kind of putting pressure on, on top of you, right? So, I got the guillotine. Yeah, oh, this sucks, right? I know that he's trying to put pressure on me, and because he's so high up on my body, I can't bring him down into the space in which I have the most leverage to finish the guillotine, right? So I'm just going to bring his hips away, right? And now he's at, sorry. <laughs> now he's exactly where he needs to be, right? So there's always going to be scenarios, okay, what if? I can answer all your what ifs later, right? Oh. <laughs> now we're going to get some, uh, do kind of a setup that's a little flashier. Um, mm. It's actually one of my favorite setups, and it's, it's definitely highlight real worthy. And when you, but it's, it's also relatively simple, right? And instead of putting the head in the bucket, we are going to use that same hand and create a bucket, right? And so I can use this hand for other shit. So my same, same setup, right, really, is we want to tie up, and I see a lot of people tying up like this. Okay? Don't go, don't go ear to ear, right? Be a little bit more upright. I, when you're, and this is the whole rest of it. But when I tie up, I want to dominate the inside position. I want to dominate this temple. And I'm a little bit more upright, especially if I can get him here. Because if I can get him here, look at the angle of his back and his neck. Look at that nice little beam. He's not strong, right? If he tries to go for a double leg, 
right? I have space. If he actually gets my legs, I can just sprawl his face into the dirt, right? Can we see that? Yeah. Uh, so we're still doing Newton's third law, right? We're creating an action to facilitate an opposite reaction. I like an inside tie, right? So if he's also normally when we tie up, he's going to go reach for my head. Boom. Inside tie. You don't want to be out here because then really all I'm doing is holding his elbow for him. Okay? So I want to bring it out because that opens him up a little bit. I give a little bit of a push, and as soon as I feel that he's pushing back, I'm doing a whoop. It's like a little alley oop. Boom. You're creating an S in the air. I'm dropping him in, I'm rotating my hand out, and I'm creating the bucket. Okay? So, boom. Okay? So he comes, boom. All with one hand. Do it a couple different ways. Boom. Boom. Now, instead of immediately grabbing my hand, I'm going to do an underhook. Okay? <coughs> That's why, boom, I have the inside tie, dive my hand underneath. I have come almost like that. Can you call it half Nelson from the front? Right? Seven, seven, seven. Is there a Turquoise? Uh, there was a ton mixer or like power half. Power half. Whatever it's called. Do this. Cool? Now, I'm going to take him to the ground, but the way I take him to the ground is I'm facing him here, right? I'm going to drop to my knees here and bring him with me. <laughs> so up here, boom, just to my knees. But it has to be at a 45. Because if I just drop to my knees in front of him, he's going to play it like this, and maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. But if I do a rotation, and I do the rotation, it is the same principle I use for my guard holes. Anytime you include a rotation, boom, and I initiate the movement, I know where my body's going, but he's following. And he's following in a rotation, rotating manner. So he's going to be really off balance. And that's going to give me another half second to execute. Right? So we're here, and the inside tie, and a nice lobe of his head. Actually, he's got a nice head. It's right in the palm of my hand. Right? Wow. <laughs> so I give a little bit of a push, do my S grip, get my half hook. Right? I'm going to drop to my knees at a 45. If he drops to his knees, now I have a couple options. I can just sit down and cover the back. Maybe he stays on his knees. Or, more fun, is I'm going to sit through with this inside leg. Outside leg, inside leg. I'm going to use this half hook and the back that I'm driving his head down to take him to his back. Boom. Right? Now I'm in side control. It's, you can finish the guillotine from here, from top side. It's a little bit trickier. Um, but what I want everybody to do now, since we don't have a whole lot of time, is you're going to sit to your hip, boom, and all you're going to do is keeping the blade underneath his chin. This is the most important part. You're driving it into the choke. So I'm curling his head up into his body. I'm driving my hips forward, and I'm still, I'm not doing this again, if you have, especially if you have long arms, you're going to create a hole. His head's going to pop out. I'm staying low, curling his head down into the choke, tucking my, my elbow, everything we did standing, but now I'm on top of him and I'm pushing my hips to make me even worse. Cool. <coughs> so the flashy takedown, boom, 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 and we're finished. You don't have to go that fast. <laughs> Questions? Do I need to do it a couple more times? Yeah. Can you do the actual take that part, but like a lot slower? Yeah! Never be on two knees too long, right? 
right? I know it's a big jujitsu guy passing move, but even if you just bring one leg up, because what do you do if you got to move from here? It's the first thing you have to do. Whoa! Eliminate that step, please. <laughs> right? So I landed. I'm off at this 45 degrees. Leg comes up. Inside leg. Right? So the leg that you have the head on, if that's easier for you to remember. Right? And then I'm just going to sit out. So the way I sit out without a person, right? I have his head, but I'm going to face out. <coughs> Boom. Right? If you've done any of those drills, right? That's what we're doing. Try them backwards next time you do. Right? But I'm here. Boom. <coughs> Looking, coming over, on top, keeping this down, tucked, rotated. I can keep the underhook. I like to, you know, just because it's there. And I'm curling down. Are you switching to a chin strap there at the end of that finish? Sometimes. Sometimes. Just because Basically, my arms. It looked like you happened to be doing My arms are like little, right? I also have a stumpy here. Yeah. So. You can finish it here. Just make sure that you're pulling up. Also, and I'll try to create some space so you can see it. If you don't want the underhook, you can still go back here. And then you really have leverage to pull. If you do have the underhook, you have to focus on pulling up just using your arm strength. Sometimes you can switch to a, uh, like a chin strap guillotine to finishing mechanics a tiny bit different because you're also scooping, right? So I have the thumb instead of the blade of my arm. My thumb, the ridge of my thumb, is doing all the, the damage. And so I'm scooping into his neck this way. The chin strap guillotine. Right? If you move this way, so the people over here can see it. I'll just, sorry. Hi, guys. <laughs> cool? Critical. This is the most important thing. This is the reason people lose guillotines. They don't flex down with this tricep, right? So be hyper aware of all those three things to finish a guillotine, regardless of whether you're finishing on top, you're finishing standing, wherever you might be finishing. Make sure that you're pulling up, rocking the baby, and driving the back of his head into the choke. Cool? Yeah? Questions? No? Yeah? Cool. One, two, three. New partner. So I just want to cover a defense. I, you know, professors have uh, different varying theories on, you know, teaching an offensive move and then teaching a defensive move, and then your students are like, cool, I don't care. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you one quick defensive move from a standing game, right? Because especially... It is not a oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you're going to get into a position where you can be flex, so you're more than happy to, as long as you get permission from your partner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Kuru, you're going to do to me if you remember how. No. <laughs> you're trying to Whichever one. Which one do you want to do? Lead off or trailing arm? Training arm. Trailing arm? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is the day. I have to immediately recognize that I'm in a shitload of trouble, right? Most people try to back out. Terrible idea, right? What is the most effective way to get out of this guillotine is look up and run towards the back. Oh, my arm's not. <laughs> so immediately, when I feel he's gotten the guillotine, I'm getting everything tight. I want to be so close to him, right? <laughs> Love him and so I'm much. Looking up. When my head is up, it's straining his arm and he can't get the leverage to guillotine, right? He wants my head to drive down into the choke. Any defense, let me burrow my neck. That's why I don't do choke classes. <laughs> Any time. Your, your defense, defending the anything, right? I have a, a golden rule, it's change the angle of attack. Anything, just change the angle of attack, right? 
He wants the angle to be down and my head to be down and for there enough the space so that he can rock the baby and you know, choke me. I'm changing his angle. If I can drive my head up and get super close, he can't bend this elbow down into the angle that it needs to be. Back, back control. Change the angle of the cat. Um, I'll show you some. We're not, I'm not going to teach it, but you can play with it. So if he's in back cat, right? He wants to choke me. He wants his shoulders to be in line with mine. He wants his hips to be in line with mine, right? If I change the angle attack, so I'm going to do, um, defend my consent. <laughs> right? So I'm going to change the angle attack. I'm not going to stay square with him. I like to hug and roll and wiggle my shoulders. I'm still in back control, but can you choke me from here? It might be uncomfortable. This kind of sucks. That sucks a little bit, but it's not bad, right? Only oh, what? Okay, but that's not the point. Changing the angle of attack. So with the guillotines, anytime you're in a guillotine, change the angle of attack. He gets me in a guillotine. Go. He's super close. I'm driving his elbow up and away from the angle that he wants it. Right? I can keep walking. And then, oh! Suplex it. <laughs> right? So let's play with that just a few more minutes. Um, and then I'm going to do a general review. So if you want to like get your cameras out and capture every little bit so that you can review it at home, you're more than welcome to. But let's cover that just a few times. And then, you know, if you're comfortable with your partner, see who gets it first. A suplex now. A suplex, yes. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. New partner. Maybe you guys remember what we did the first first technique, maybe you don't. So we're gonna review it just really quickly, right? And so just the first thing we did was finishing mechanics, right? What are the three things that we need to do to finish a game team? Rock the baby. Rock the baby. Triceps. Yeah. Triceps down, pushing down. Third third thing. Play? Yeah, that's I guess fourth thing, but the finishing mechanics. Push down. Pull up. Halfway there. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the same. Thing. Pull up, stop, <coughs> definitely with the blade of the arm here. But the finishing the mechanics of it is up, down, rocking. Right? Okay. Up, down, rock. Cool. I wish I had a great acronym. I don't. Do you have an order preference for engaging those? Mm. Like, is it better to do one of those okay. before you do the other? I usually do it in that order. Yeah, up down rock. Do you just have a down so far? It's like one motion. It's one motion, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, so, just basic, even if we get there, we want up. We can grab wherever, but make sure that the blade is up into his throat. I'm driving the back of my tricep against the back of his head so that it's driving him into the choking arm, into the arm that I'm pulling up. So it's down and up, so it's decreasing that space, and as I rock his head, it's decreasing it even more, right? Good rule of thumb, thumb or elbow to the belly button. You're not going to get there because there's going to be no head there anymore, right? But because you've exaggerated the motion, you're going to get to where you need to go. As humans, we always underestimate everything, right? Uh -oh, sir. When we're getting into a setup, 101, head in the bucket, right? We're gonna use Newton's third law. So every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I'm gonna create a reaction away from me so that he creates a reaction in the opposite direction toward me. He does all the work for me. And I'm just gonna put his head in the bucket. Now, I'm not gonna telegraph, right? <laughs> Sometimes I do if I'm being a dick. But if it's a real live match, you know, we're hand fighting, we're hand fighting, I push him away, boom. Bucket, bucket comes on, right? If you want to pull guard, you can either finish it here, but again, when we're finishing it, we're taking space away. I don't want to lean back anytime I create, I lean back and create space. I don't want to do that. What's the golden rule of jujitsu? 
When you're attacking, take space away. When you're defending, create space, right? So I'm not creating space, I'm taking that space away. So chin on the shoulder blade, do all my finishing mechanics. Or if I want to pull guard, I'm pulling guard, bringing this leg to the opposite side that I have the head. Why? Because he wants to defend this. He wants his head on one side of my body, his body on the other side. So I got to keep him on all one side of my body. So when I pull guard, boom, sit down, cover up as high as you can go. Right? Doing the same thing. Turn your hand. Yeah, thank you. I'm on it. Chin goes to the shoulder blade. It never leaves it. I never like this. I finish like this, bringing my arm up, my tricep down, my elbow to my belly button, and finishing it. Right? If I want to be fancy, I'm going to do inside tie up or hand fight, whatever they want to do. We're going to play it, right? I'm going to do an S motion with my head, with my hand. So I'm still pushing him away. Boom. Making him go the direction that he wants to go. Getting that underhook. I'm going to drop to a 45 degree angle. Immediately up on that combat face. He's not going to fall just yet. <laughs> and then my inside knee kicks out. It's a kick out, right? Boom, right? As I kick out, I'm lifting his shoulder up. That's going to turn him onto his shoulders. As I lift him up, I'm going to go belly to belly. Okay, so pop that base. Boom. Follow him over. You can finish it side. It's a little trickier. Come to mount. Flatten him out. Same finishing mechanics. You can go to a chin strap guillotine, but when you have a chin strap guillotine, we what? We scoop the ice cream. Right? If you feel like you can't get enough leverage and a pull on that first element of the finishing mechanics, if you can't pull up enough, right, I'm going to lift up so everybody can see. If I can't get this, I'm going to release the arm. He can do whatever he wants. By the time he does something, I've already finished it. Right? So don't be afraid to modify it. Boom. He gets me in the guillotine. Boom. I'm getting super close to him, even if he tries to keep a hold of this, right? He's never going to finish it. I'm just going to wait him out. If I, ah, he's going to find half strain on his shoulder. If I want to finish it from here, grab and look up, right? Or come to the back and suplex. Um, I've said this in all, I've pretty much all of my classes. If my body type is very different than many of yours. <coughs> Don't take my technique as the word of God. It's not, right? Nobody's all, all powerful in jujitsu. If something doesn't work for you, modify it. Feel free to modify it, whatever I do, to fit your body type, to fit your game. If you even just take a little teeny portion of this class, I'm stoked, right? Just, you know, message me and tell me about it, because that's always awesome to hear. Um, but modify it, you know? And also, experiment. Experiment, experiment, experiment. You do not have to be a black belt to invent anything in jiu-jitsu. You can be a white belt and have a creative mind and invent something in jiu-jitsu. Don't think that you have to, everything you do on the mat, you have to have learned first. Do what naturally feels right, right? Make shit up. I love to make shit up. Sometimes you, you end up in really weird, wild roles that you could never replicate in your entire life. And it's fun, right? Jiu-Jitsu should be fun. It shouldn't be work. You shouldn't dread coming here. You should be excited to come here, excited to learn, excited to experiment, excited to grow and, and even maybe even grow the sport, you know, by your own <coughs> small contribution to it. Um, so thank you for taking my class. It's a little over time, but um, I hope you enjoyed choking each other out and making friends. And I have another class Friday, I think. So I'd love to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you.